Well, praise God, hallelujah, we are back. When I say we, there's three in me. In fact, we are actually 1,000 looking at you right now because one trace is 1,000. And who are those three in me? God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Right? I say God is worthy to be praised. Amen. You know, I thought uh, this day was kind of, you know, over with any broadcast. But then there's something that came to my spirit. And that is, let's be real. Let's be real with one another. Let's be real when it comes to people. The way that one treats another person is the way that your relationship goes with God. I've got something so powerful and some of these pointers are going to be very straight because I want to speak the truth in love. Now, when somebody has wronged you, when somebody has wronged you, uh, before you want to set uh, uh, things right, before you want to set things right, make absolutely sure that you see things right. I'm going to say that again. Before you want to uh, set something uh, right or you attempt to set something in its right perspective or you want to set something right with regards to correction, make sure that you see things absolutely right because the way you see it is the way you are going to respond or react. Now, when somebody does something wrong to you, avoid stewing over it. Because the longer you take to settle that wrong that you think is wrong, the other person might actually be right. Who knows? The longer you take to settle it, the greater foothold the enemy will have to torment your mind with thoughts of accusation or thoughts of harassment. Jesus said in Matthew 5.25, settle matters quickly. Not once did Jesus say we must do this. Point your finger. There's nine, get around this microphone, there's nine fingers that points back at me. In fact, in Isaiah 58, the fasting chapter, it says, do away with a malicious finger. Now, when somebody does something wrong to you, I know it's upsetting, of course, especially when you think you are right and they are wrong. Then pause, take a deep breath, and be real. But ask God, say, Lord, give me the wisdom. Because you see, God's word says that he will use John the Baptist, for instance. That's one example. Part of his assignment was to turn the disobedient, watch now, to the wisdom, to the wisdom of the righteous. He did not say to turn the disobedient to a, a first fight. We must be so cautious how you handle disagreements. When your child disagrees with you, to tell the child, you will do this. I've heard this in places I have visited or in different arenas where the parent will say, 
You will listen to me. Wow. Pause. Take a deep breath. Take the child one side and say, explain to me whether you whether you the mom or the dad. Explain to me what made you do this. When you give someone an opportunity to explain themselves, you have gone into their world to have a greater understanding what motivated them to do it. Instead of being like a hammer, oh, you've done wrong, bam, and that hammer comes down and you let them have it. That's not the way that our Heavenly Father corrects us. You see, correction must always build up. When God corrects us, He does not make us feel lousy. I wanted to use the word rubbish, but I thought that might, that might have been too strong. God does not make us feel like dirt bags when He corrects us. He builds us up and He speaks the truth in love and it is called grace of God that is sufficient to strengthen us in our weakness. Now, there's a difference. There's a difference between a, an accident and a mistake. If somebody uh, makes an accident, it's they, they didn't plan to play up. They didn't plan to do something deliberately. But when somebody makes a mistake, or, or let me just go back. Let's say uh, someone holds a glass and drops it or knocks it over. The liquid goes everywhere. They didn't plan to do that. It's a little accident, right? And we should not be bent out of shape because of that. But a mistake is when somebody makes a mistake, it means that the individual knew what was right, but they've chosen to make a mistake. So you pause, whether it's an adult, whether it's a brother, a sister, whether it's your spice or your spouse, and let's say they have aggravated you. All you have to do is to pause and say, you know, what you've just done or said, I don't seem to understand what motivated you, but I feel hurt or disappointed. Help me to understand you better. Instead of getting just so cross and you fly off the handle. Another thing is this. Uh, when you choose to settle matters God's way, you will have greater peace and lesser helicopters flying around in your stomach when you butterflies, when you think about that person. When you correct somebody, think about this. Uh, I think I may have deleted it. Let me just see here. Let me just, I'm just pulling some, something out here. Okay, let me just see if I can pull it off here and maybe put it on the screen. I'm not sure. But I'll just read you this quote, okay? When, uh, let me just see if I can bring it up on your screen. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to do something here. Let's just see. Let's just see. Uh, God bless you. Okay. He says, it's okay. Let me just carry on. When someone does something wrong, don't forget all the things that they have done right. You see, we are so often, we want to focus 
on just that wrong that that person has done. But what about all the rights, the right things that that person has done? We forget about those things. And then we just focus so much on that wrong that before that person can say anything, before that person can say anything, we jump down their throat. Uh, it's just an expression, okay? You see, we cannot correct a wrong with a wrong attitude. Then, then you are wrong as well. If I correct somebody with a wrong attitude, I'm in a wrong as well. I want to conclude this short broadcast. We've got to get this right, especially in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, Renee. We've got to get this right, especially in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. When a brother or a sister does something wrong that irritates you, nowhere in the Bible does it say, go and gossip about it. You are accountable before God. And that's I say it with an absolute respect towards you. You are accountable before God to take that brother or sister one side and say, excuse me, what you have just done, what you have just said, help me understand why are you mixing in somebody else's salad? Yes. Why are you interfering with what I have been assigned to do? Are you criticizing me to break down my character? Or are you trying to control me? Or are you just trying to mix into so uh, something that you don't have authority or you there's no place for you to do that you need uh, help me understand what makes you do that instead of getting angry and avoiding the person now in church or looking for a perfect church if you find the perfect church please don't join it you you are gonna ruin it you are gonna ruin it I see somebody making a command. When you find, bless you, Sharon, when you find a perfect church, beloved, don't join. You're going to ruin that church. There's not one preacher, including me, number one on the list. There's not one preacher that is perfect. There's not one church, I want to say, congregation that's perfect. And I am... You know, I, I, I thought this was it. I'm going to go and do something else. But the, the Holy Spirit didn't want to let me carry on doing something different and wanted me to broadcast this. I thought, wow, okay. So let's conclude. Let's summarize. Very simple. Jesus said, when somebody wrongs you, settle matters quickly. That's it. Take your brother one side or your sister and say excuse me what makes you say what you did say and just hear what they say and then when you ask the question why see the question w h y puts a person on the spot having to explain themselves first ask what makes you interfere with my assignment that I've been appointed to carry out? Because if, let's say, if you are a seamstress, let's say you're a seamstress. I'm using a weird example. Now, I come along and I say, you know what, those stitches don't look right. 
what qualifies me what qualifies me to uh, instruct you how to sew when I myself am not a seamstress? <laughs> now, I know when you interfere in someone else's business, how do we say, if you scratch my salad, yeah, let me not go there. Okay, <laughs> let me not go there. All right, let me just focus here, okay? Yeah. So what qualifies me to say to you, you are an experienced seamstress. Hey, your stitches are skew. At that precise moment, you, you, you look at me and you say, I appreciate what you're trying to say but you don't have the experience I have. So how do you know what I'm doing is wrong? It's time that we become more real and straight with people, where it's family, where it's church people. Jesus says, tell your brother, go to your brother when he does you wrong. That's in Matthew 18. He says, read it, uh, you know, just as part of your devotion. Go to your brother or your sister and tell them how you feel about what just transpired. And then if they don't want to listen to you and they just got a ba 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 you know, wah, 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 wah. Whining, 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 or just, they we call it in ministry over the years, they've got the gift of continuation. They don't stop talking. <laughs> you say, excuse me, please take a breath, pause, I need to say something. And if they don't want to, say, I tell you what, this conversation is going nowhere. I'm getting one of the leaders or someone else that will come alongside, but this matter we're going to settle. Instead of just running away from a relationship, running away from covenant people, running away from church, yes, and just dropping your family or your friendship circles. So how did you benefit somebody else? We need to be real. Amen. Lastly, Again, I'm going to repeat what I've said early on. Before you uh, attempt to set anything uh, right or to set things right, before you attempt to set things right, make sure that you see with your understanding right before you want to correct somebody. And ask yourself off, before you want to correct somebody or interfere in somebody else's business, who has qualified you or given you the permission to correct that person? Interesting. That's why Jesus said, when this person upsets this person, these two people, they go to each other. You go to each other and you settle the matters between these two people. Instead of going away whining about it and writing on Facebook. That is absolutely wrong to degrade or to, um, what's the right word, to wrong the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is absolutely wrong. When you speak out against the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have just made yourself out a weapon against God Almighty who built His church through His Son, Jesus Christ. And watch out. Jesus says, if you cause one of these little ones of 
mind to stumble. Read it. It's there in Matthew. He says, it's better for you to hang a whole millstone around your neck and jump into the sea. Please, I plead with you. Avoid unnecessary confrontation by asking yourself, have I been given permission to interfere in somebody else's business? You know, it's, it's like this one example, uh, this gentleman, I mean, he is just a profound mechanic. He just knows how to fix things. And his wife comes. Now, what? Why are you taking so long to fix this thing? <laughs> Whew, that guy lost it. He lost it big time. I mean, he let her have it. There was a better way for her to say, honey, I don't know if you call, <laughs> if she calls him honey, I'm just using it. Or say, John, Doe, you know, or whatever. Uh, I, will you be ready, uh, you know, in an hour or so because I'm going to have supper ready? Or do you want me to rather just wait because I can see you are very busy? That's a different way of putting it. Instead of just saying to that individual, why are you taking so long? You don't know what they are going through and how uh, the different steps that they are following to correct something uh, or to fix something. And, and here you come with an outrageous statement just like that, enough to give the devil a foothold and the flesh to manifest. Be kind, be loving, and if something is not right, then become part of the solution and not part of the problem. Amen. May God bless you. I simply thank you, Father. I've simply just obeyed your prompting, and whoever can benefit through this little video, may they be, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for, Father? Yeah, may they, may they receive an adjustment to express themselves in a far greater, beautiful way so that no unwholesome talk will come out of their mouths, but only that which is good for edification and building others up. Hallelujah. What is the command here? Let me just see. I bring up on your screen. Oh, glory to God. God bless you. Go and be a problem solver. Amen. You have enough of God in you to do what is right. And when you do what is right, what is wrong becomes bound. Have a great afternoon, evening or morning, wherever you're watching from. God bless you. Love you. Bye now.